viewers, the people who would eventually work with me to see whether I was suitable for them, where I, whether I fit into the culture or not, whether I was the type of person that they wanted, particularly since I'd be looking after HR, right? So you have to probably hire the, 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 the you probably have to make, make the, 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 the right choice for that. And hopefully, um, since I've been here for seven years, I hope I am the right choice for them so far. Um, um, I, I chose Hilti over the companies that, that I was looking at because they put people first. They put people first. They had a diversity and inclusive agenda. Um, they had a very much uh, learning, continuous learning um, uh, a culture and, and agenda. That, I mean, of course, we are very diverse. We're fast changing for, for, for young people and even, you know, even me, I like fast changing, a fast changing pace. I want to know what's happening, especially in the digital market, right? Um, I'll say culture again because I can't keep, I can't stop saying culture because it is the very, very main reason why um, people stay with us, right? Um, the opportunities. Um, and last but not least, very, very important. Um, we are a very performance oriented culture uh, and we are a very caring culture. We keep on saying we care. We also show that we care. So I think this is one of the reasons why I'm here, why I enjoy my role, um, why as a woman I don't feel I have to compete so much because, um, you know, the key word here is equal opportunities, right? Now, um, when people say, you know, Mylene, how has it been over the past seven years? How do you cope? Um, what does it take to, to be uh, a woman and then a leader? Um, you know, you see Dr. Nurul, I really admire her. I've known her now for many years, um, especially with the, the um, USM collaboration as well as uh, the IT competition at uh, Hilti Asia IT Services um, and actually global IT, located in our office in KL, but obviously it's a global competition uh, and actually it's happening next week. Um, and I've known Dr. Nuru through this and she is a very strong woman and she is one very amazing role model um, that I look up to um, as well, you know. Um, so I think if you ask a woman what does it take to become a strong leader, a strong female leader in a, in a company, right? Um, I would say to the ladies, even gentlemen also, right? Always remember, right? that you are a woman and you don't have to change yourself to behave in a different manner or to be more masculine, uh, especially if you are in a male dominated industry. Um, maybe you guys don't know this, but if you see experience on LinkedIn, uh, you probably have a little giggle to yourself because I used to work for a tire manufacturing company. Okay. I used to, uh, I was the, the, the minority population in a tire manufacturing company. And um, I worked my way up uh, in this tire manufacturing company, Goodyear Malaysia Berhad, I'm proud to say. And this was the very strong foundation that I had. And I worked my way up to become their first uh, HR director since uh, they founded in 1974. And um, this was a massive achievement for me. I, I wasn't looking at the prospect of I want to be, I want to be the leader, I want to be in that role, but it happened for me gradually through perseverance, through hard work, through the passion that I had for the work that I had. You say, Mylene, but you graduated in law, but why are you doing HR? It's the passion for people and the work that I do with people that really, you know, instead of helping people in the legal way, I have the legal knowledge to help people in other ways with my knowledge, you know, this is why I enjoy it. So like I said, in a male-dominated industry, be yourself. Be yourself. You don't have to change any any part of you, especially if you're a woman, because there are advantages. 
okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the advantages in, I had to deal with unions. Unions were pretty much, not even pretty much, it was actually 100% male. Um, we had to go through collective agreements and these are, these are tire builders who are really salt of the earth people who um, wanted what they wanted, right? So having, being a woman, you can be persuasive in, in the way you speak, in the way you carry yourself, in the way you are polite. Um, I remember how I dealt with them and um, till today, um, I am in, I'm still con in contact with, with these people in, in, in the, who, who work in the factory, right? Um, which is a, which is a, a nice thing to have, a nice thing to be, right? Um, now, um, we have to find also the opportunities for improvement and advancement, right? Um, but how do you do this? You seek the help of your peers, you seek the help of mentors, um, you seek their input on how you can better grow yourself. I mean, you look at yourself in the mirror, you know, you can see what your reflection tells you, but you really don't know about how you treat other people or how you behave or how how people perceive you unless you actually ask um, your mentor, you ask, um, you know, you, you get input from your peers, right? Um, I always say keep an open mind. Right. Keep an open mind um, and um, see things from all angles. Um, you have to understand the situation by asking the right questions. Right. Um, this also prevents us from us from making very rash decisions. So open mind is very important. You always have to take a step back and keep an open mind when you approach a, a subject. Um, also, be very aware. Be very aware of how you behave. Be very aware of your actions. Be very aware. Have that sense of awareness of looking at something from a holistic point of view. And then you break it down in order to see what's really going on. Okay? I mean, you say, wow, it's a lot of work, right? But you do this sometimes uh, unconsciously. Okay, um, and then be mindful of yourself. Be mindful about the people around you. Be mindful of how 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 you how you portray yourself. A lot of self reflection is needed because sometimes when you become a leader, you tend to be a little bit authoritative. Get this done. You need to delegate. You know, you you you, you tend to do these things, but you also have to check yourself and say, um, I need to reflect on and be mindful about about how i put my requests not demands uh, how you put your requests across okay um people will like you people actually will like working for you if you are actually mindful i mean you know the mindfulness and the the, the please and thank yous and the would you mind if you know um i mean being being also very kind and polite takes you a a, a very long way um now, a lot of women, I feel, don't like to step out of their comfort zone. I have this job, I'm very happy, please don't disturb me, I, I want to carry on. But then they, when they see someone doing really well, they kind of go, I wish I was. Hey, you don't have to wish you were, you know, you can be, right? So step out of your comfort zone. Um, it's okay to take a chance. It's okay uh, to take a chance because this brings you better opportunities. It brings you a lot of self-improvement. Um, I'll tell you this, but you guys are probably going to, to, to laugh at me. Um, because I, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone right now. You may be thinking, hey, Marlene, you're, you, you seem to be happy. You seem to be very comfortable in what you're doing. It's because it's a topic that I'm passionate about. It's a topic that I know. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone now because it's the first time I'm doing this. Um, and and thank you, you know, to all of you and all your smiling faces. And I must thank Vishnu also for, for, for prepping me before I came onto this call. Um, but I'm stepping out of it to, to do this for you guys and hopefully it makes sense. Well, hopefully what I say makes sense, right? Okay, so conquering your fears. I have just, I think I'm conquering my fears now. Um, although I appear an, as an extrovert, I'm really an introvert. I'd be quite 
happy, happy you, know, you know, reading my book, book kind of doing gardening, gardening, listening to music, music and, 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 you know, you having know, my own little space. space. But I believe, but I believe that, that that is what's what needed to energize me, me to then put on my public face. But conquering your fears, you always have to make an effort. Now, now, I have managed, I have managed to, conquer to conquer my fear, my fear of speaking of in public because I know how to do it now. How do I do it? I enjoy my subject, I plan, I plan, I plan, I really plan, right? Uh, and I don't run away from things. I could have quite easily run away from this, but I said, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And um, I really want to do it. And it's going to be something interesting um, for me, right? Uh, and also, um, I can share I can share what I have gone through with, with all of you. Um, talking about public speaking, uh, I think, I don't think I know that my mentor is, uh, my mentor, basically put me in a situation where um, he made me do it. He made me do it. He, he put me in very tough situations. I'd be sitting down very relaxed and he would suddenly say, yeah, Mylene, you want to say something? And actually, I don't want to say anything, but he would make me do that, right? So he put me in a, in a difficult position for my own good to conquer my fears. Um, the other part is... Um, stand up and lead what you believe in so if you believe in in if you believe in equality um if you are in a position where you can influence someone um you know i would definitely encourage you to stand up um use your ability to influence in order to achieve um equality or achieve a, a result that you really that you really want right um, the other thing is very, very important is to treat other people with respect. Now, you know, you often hear this, right? You need to treat others with, with, with respect because or treat other people how you would like to be treated. I'm, I'm, it seems like a very... It seems like a very simple... Um, simple... Uh, uh, sorry, Miss Miley. Yes? yes? Yep, all right. So there's a little bit of glitch on your side. You oh, might really? it's like a little bit near. Yep, okay, it's better, better right now. Okay, okay, yep. good. All right. Um, so, yeah, I was talking about treating other people with respect, right? Um, so it's true. You have to treat people with respect and, and treat people how you want to be treated. This is a, this is the sign of somebody who... who not only will will be respected in a position of leadership but will actually thrive if you practice if you practice um you know respect um but last uh, but you know last but not least of all i believe that you know you should trust your instincts women especially you know they question they tend to question themselves a lot you don't trust your instinct if you look at something and you think yes that's the right way to go that is the usually that is the right way the to right do way things to that's things that's the right way the right to go about about, about it, it right trust your own voice i'm talking about guys as well right instinct is very very important um trust it more guys you more you, you guys you probably are you know more daring never mind i know i don't see i just jump first right women we calculate whether we want to jump or we don't want to jump right but i say jump trust your instincts jump okay okay so uh, uh, now, coming, coming to, to saying all this, all this sounds really easy. Hey, my name, this, this sounds really easy, you know. Um, but it, you know, you my your introduction, right, Jeremy? You said twenty years, right? Gosh, yes, twenty years. Um, it really doesn't. It, it took me. It took me quite a number of years to understand. But through experience, through through working. Uh, through, uh, working, through working, through experience, experience um, um, I was able, I was able to, to take all of, all of this. Um, sometimes, sometimes I'm good at it, sometimes I'm not good at it. I still have to continue to check myself, right? And I get other people to also check me to see whether I am behaving the way I, 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 I want to behave. Um, you know, I, I, I wish that I had somebody to hold me and say, um, Mylene, 
you need to be like this so you 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 know you you need to you, you this is how this is how you conquer your fears uh this is how you stand up and lead um i i i learned it i learned it going along i think that's also a very 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 valuable um uh, experience that i have had um but i i think women in this generation you all are super fast tracked already you know you are you are empowered you are so strong um and you are on the fast track to being um far greater than than the the previous generations i believe right but i don't like using the word but however you have challenges how you know we still have challenges today um about being treated equally women being treated equally um you know but i believe it's it's the it also falls to the men in the organization to be able to they i mean men in the organization are very very important they are the people who can advocate this change and in hilti we have um you know not only our ceo um not only our board of directors um and and even you know our our leaders um these are the people who actually advocate change within the organization so you can start small with your family you know um, my dad believed in equal opportunity um you know whatever my brother got i got you know and whatever opportunities to for education he got i got so um it's up to us to provide that equal opportunity in our family, in our organization. Um, and our male leaders are very important also to, to, to kickstart this and, and, and put it as a, as a one of their, one of the agendas that they drive in the organization, right? Um, and advocating on your own behalf. Women don't usually like to talk about themselves. They don't like to, you know, um, uh, put, uh, themselves put themselves out, out there, there and say, say I've done I've this done or I am great or look what I have achieved. achieved. Um, um, when I say when they I say don't it's usually, it's, it's yeah, they don't usually. usually. But I see but now, I see I'm, now very, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very proud, proud when I when I go when into I go LinkedIn into or when I go into Facebook and I see women so proud to say I've done this. I am I'm in a male dominated industry and yet this is what I have done, right? And this is my achievement, and you know. And, and we, we, we can even can talk, talk about, about CEOs, CEOs of, of tech, tech companies, companies um, um, being women, women uh, in these days. And, and, and you can see women leaders really portraying and really bringing up that subject of, of equality, right? Um, again, I, I say challenges of trusting your own voices, ladies, trust your instinct, trust your, trust your voice. Um, when it tells you um, that it's the right thing to do, right? Or avoid something, trust your instincts, right? Um, building alliances. Um, people talk about networking. It sounds a lot easier than it actually is because if you are not, um, you, you have to learn the, the intricacies or the ways or the steps on how to network with people, create alliances. Um, this is how we create alliances. Look at USM and look at Hilti. This is a good alliance that we are creating. We are creating a very nice platform, not only for um, education, purposes but for many other social events as well right um uh and and you know the other thing um which i also think is the imposter syndrome <laughs> um you know we we are in, in in the society we are still faced with systemic gender bias and equality right and women often find it difficult to to form a very uh, accurate self-assessment um and it prevents them from actually you know portraying uh the confidence of portraying their accomplishments um confidently so i mean i i say i i tell you a few things or rather i i discuss a few things about about 
what I believe and, and how what I believe in and what the, the journey that I've been through. Obviously, you can ask me any questions uh, a little bit later on, but also the challenges that, that we may face um, and the challenges are, are, are very real. Okay, and, um, you know, talking about, talking about, you know, uh, Hilti and talking about um, what I do there, um, I also have to bring you to how uh, the mandate, the mandate that I was given, the opportunity that, and the mandate that I was given uh, to grow um, Hilti Asia IT services, uh, not only in competency, but also in the number of people that we hired. So when we first started Hilti, I'll show you the slide now. When we first started, at, uh, I first started um, my five year stint, right? In, in uh, Hilti Asia IT Services, because I took, I got, had two jobs, seven years, but I had two jobs, two years, I had two jobs. And then I realized, oh my gosh, this is a little bit too much now. What should I do? I thought, you know what? I'll take the challenge. I'm a law graduate. I don't know anything about, about IT. IT and it's really it was really scary sales marketing customer service no problem I can deal with that I thought okay let me move from the market organization to IT because I know nothing and you thought you know I know nothing and why did I do that challenge it was a challenge to me so I did that and the mandate given to me was very interesting Mylene, you need to grow us from this many people to this many people, and I give you two, maybe three years, okay? It was a task and a half, but I can tell you, teamwork, teamwork was the key in, into this into this growth where we experienced significant growth of people and competence the past couple of years i started in 2014 so you can see the number there is at 65 right till today we have 267 headcounts of people our, our team members and we are looking um, at a nice healthy projection of 310 team members to join us by the time we get to 2020 to 2022 okay it's a lot of work it's a lot of interviews it's a lot of interaction but you know uh, we are excited because we were literally a startup in 2010 I think there were less people before that. Uh, Twenty-eight seems um, uh, quite a bit more, but I think there were quite, there was quite a lot less. So, how do we do this? You ask, right? Uh, I give you at a glance what we are like at the moment. So, we have two hundred and sixty-seven team members. Average service four point three years. So, yes, we have a lot of young people. A lot, a lot of young people. I think my boss and I make the 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 the, the what the older population of this of this uh, equation, right? But most of my wonderful team members have a average service of four point three years. The average age is thirty four. And this 34 also don't seem, this 34 is also the number that has been added by my boss and myself, okay? <laughs> because we are slightly older, a couple of people are slight, of us are slightly older. So we bring the average age a little bit up. Um, we have 20 plus global IT solution. Uh, we own, actually, we have ownership of 20 plus uh, global IT solutions uh, across the globe. Um, and um, we have 95% retention in 2020, December. We work very hard to keep our people. We work very hard to make sure they have the right career development for themselves. Um, the other thing I'm really proud of is we have 21 different nationalities and we are growing. I mean, literally, we have everyone from every part of the globe and it's very exciting. Um, 35% of our team leaders are women, and this is a very amazing achievement for us. So 25% globally, 35% itself in our little small entity here uh, in, in KL. So how, now how do we do all this, especially our retention, right, and how we hire? Um, is we basically, if you see here, in, in a slide, it says increase accessibility to trainings, learning, development and offerings. What I'm trying to say here is 
when you come to us, like you guys are pretty much, some of you may be, may be final year students, I think. Um, some of you are getting there in second year, going to your third year. Um, what we're saying to you is, we, when you come to us, I think Vishnu can also vouch for this. Um, before you come to us, you may want to do an internship with us. Or when you graduate, you know, you might think, oh, let me consider uh, for IT graduates. And not only IT graduates, we talk about also sales and marketing, right? Um, when you graduate, maybe I want to join, I want to see what they have. What I can tell you is we have a very, we understand the needs because like you say, like you, you saw, right? Most of our hires are literally fresh from uni. Um, we have, a, we, we've created a very nice platform. Um, when you come in, we don't, we don't put you to work straight away. We literally handhold you. We do a lot of face ins for you. We do a lot of orientations for you because we ourselves went into the marketplace or the workplace at a very young age, right? We know what it takes. We don't want to repeat the fact that you carry, you go and for the first week, you know, as an, even an intern, you never carry coffee. Okay. You never go fetch coffee as an intern for us. We literally put you with a buddy and you, you, you shadow, you observe, you shadow, you learn. As a new hire, you are very well oriented, you're very well faced into every part of um, the work that we do at uh, Hilti Asia IT or Global IT. Um, and you are well prepared. Nobody lets go of your hand until you're ready to let go. Um, you are all brilliant minds. You're all brilliant minds. You are you are the kind of people we like to hire um, because um, you are very innovative. In even in your even before you do anything, you're so innovative in how you how you conduct yourself and how you want to actually build your career. And for us, it's a it's a, a plus plus, right? So it's not much work that needs to be put in. Um, at the end of it. So we, we train you, we use soft skills, we do team buildings, um, we have integration activities, uh, we develop your career. So honestly, everybody gets an individual development plan when they join us. Everyone gets um, you get to you get to determine the career that you want, which is very nice about healthy. Right. Um, and I can see Vishnu nodding his head. Yeah. You get to determine the career that you want with us. So you tell us what you want. Tell us, tell us what you want. Obviously, we have to have that. Right. And we will develop your career according to exactly what your interests are. And this is how we manage our retention. This is how we manage um, our hiring. Hiring is easy, but retaining our people are, 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 are not easy. Right. And so we put in the efforts to do that. Now, it's not all work okay it's not all individual development plan i have to do my my development or my contribution we also have a lot of fun we give back to society uh, using our csr activities we also have a lot of integration activities our own our own um young people in the organization form this integration team in order to have fun. Have fun meaning they organize family day, they organize CSRs, they organize games. We have we have badminton, basketball, um, you name it, we have it. And these are the people, we use the people who want it to drive it. So you want it, you drive it and we will support you. So it's not all, it's not all study and fun and get in your boring, boring work all the time, but we have a lot of fun. And I think the major thing is we used to do a lot of makan makan. They used to love it. The movie nights, you know, things like that. Unfortunately, now we can't, but you know, we still do it. We all get on, got, get on to teams meeting and we order grab food and we eat together. So, this is uh, a little bit uh, from me today. Thank you very much. Um, I think I've, I've, I've gone over my time also a little bit. But for those who are interested, who, those who are in the call at the moment, if you consider a career with Hilti, um, we have you. You can always contact us um, at the at the email uh, that is on your screen at the moment. Um, and then we look forward to seeing you. We look we look forward to hosting you actually. So thank you very much.
All right, thank you, Miss Miley. It has been such a great. Oh, sorry, I can hear someone. Oh, okay. Do you mind switching off your mic first? Once again, sorry for the disruption. Okay, that's great. That's great. So. Ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen, isn't this isn't a great this session? session? It's not just it's not a normal sharing, sharing session, but it has been an opportunity, for, opportunity you, for you, for your for entire, entire life. life. Such a great company, company with all the diversity all and also inclusivity. inclusivity. And not only not that, only but the opportunities that lies ahead, ahead you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, please appreciate, please appreciate it. it. And, and I know all of you are more excited right now for the interactive session, right? And if you are excited for it, please leave in the comment like, yes, I'm going for it. I have a lot of questions. I know all of you have a lot of burning questions they want to ask Miss Mylene about it and now it's time for it so ladies and gentlemen I guess now let's without further ado move on to the second agenda the interactive session so I have a few questions first from me and also my team and also some of the participants that had left out during the registration form and now I'm going to leave them out first of all during the interactive session uh, sorry the introduction session that has been mentioned by Miss Mylene QT Asia is a multinational corporation that you know a the culture of the portray gender equality as one of the equal core, one of the quality that they pursue, and also inclusivity. And my question to Miss Mylene is, how has the role of QT changed throughout the five to ten years? And also, what are the upcoming plans that's going to do about the topic of women empowerment? Yep. Okay, so Jeremy, if I get your question correctly, the role, uh, my role, what do you mean? How has it changed? Uh, the role of beauty and okay. as a whole, yep. Um, and then your second question was? Was how was uh, how has QT changed throughout the five to ten years, and are there any upcoming plans regarding the gender equality and also inclusivity plan? Okay, um, you know, like like all organizations, um. Like all organizations, you have um, you have gender equality, you have the you have the um, the diversity and inclusion um, uh, topic, right, in the company. Um, the role of Hilti has evolved, and it, it has evolved very very quickly um, in in the market, right? I mean, we've always had diversity, we've always had inclusion, but you know, it's come forefront in the minds now. Um, to Throughout, throughout the globe um, and we are there, we are one of the leaders, we are in the forefront when it comes to uh, uh, gender diversity, uh, diversity inclusion, we make sure that it starts from the top, that it's top down, that we, from, from the owners, um, you know, Michael Hilty and his family, uh, to our CEO, to our leaders and it cascades down to the rest of us. Um, we we always talk about this diversity and inclusion topic. We practice it through our hiring. We practice practice it through our promotions within. We practice it, as you can see, with regards to the percentage of women that we actually have. Um, also, not only um, not only gender diversity. We also talk about generational diversity. Ge geographical diversity. So these are the things that, um, you know, Hilti does not embrace just gender equality. We, we just want equality. Uh, we want equality across board. So it's gender, uh, generational and geographical. So it's the three Gs that we, we have developed. That's great. That's a super great answer given by Miss Mylene. And also this is something that I wish all companies are pursuing as a whole. And moving on to the second question, and here comes the crucial point. What made you kickstart to embark on this adventurous journey? What inspired you to do so? Um, the journey of gender, the journey of uh, women or the journey of particular Yep, to, by joining from initially to getting a law degree and now to huge organization. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what kickstarted me? Um, I guess 
Um, education is very important. I advocate this um, across the board. Education is very important. Given the opportunity to get a good education is your is is the best building block you can have. Is the best foundation you can have. Um, I was fortunate enough to to be able to to have that, and all of you here also are very fortunate to have a, a fabulous education. Use that as your platform, as as I did, um, and then. Find your passion. I found my passion. I did law. I did law and I thought, should I be a lawyer or should I not? And I thought, well, a legal career is not something that I, I really was particularly interested in, but my law degree was extremely useful. Now, I have got people in my HR team who have degrees in psychology, IT, uh, business, and they are HR people. Why you ask? Because um, it's the passion. It's the passion to serve people. It's the passion to be able to... Um, it's a kind of CSR also, you know, to be able to match the right people to the right jobs, give people a career, not just a job, be able to give opportunities. I think for me, that's what helped me. And what propelled me is my first few jobs in the UK, the first few jobs that I had in Malaysia. Um, and up to Hilti, I mean, Hilti was a choice that I made. Um, it was not, uh, I wasn't in a position where I, I, I had to, I wanted to. And looking at how our organization is at the moment, I couldn't be more proud. I mean, even in this pandemic, right? It proved to me, even in this pandemic, it was very surreal for us to start with. Um, but our organization was very fast. We acted very fast. We immobilize uh, our digital way of working so quickly. Um, you know, the, the global IT team is amazing. They 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 deploy teams like within within weeks to the whole entire uh, Hilti family across the globe. Um, we also looked at the situation and saw that our people were in need. Right. So what did we do? We collected money. How did we collect money? We collected the money in the form of a solidarity fund. So our employers, our employees started to donate their own salary, a percentage of their own salary um, to help their severely impacted colleagues across the world. I mean, I've never been in an organization like that. So if you ask me what kickstarted it, you know what maintains me in this company and in this situation and is is being able to be proud of um, the institution that I work for. That's great. That's super great. It doesn't only implies that, you know, it's a smooth journey, but it's so the culture that adopts is something that's extraordinary because not every single company can retain their employee and also not every single company can make sure the employee praise them that well. You know, it's something that we are looking forward to and I'm pretty sure that we have more questions on it. All right, moving on to it. So throughout your career journey from, you know, from the, after you graduate itself until what you have achieved so far, what is the biggest obstacle that you have faced? Okay, very good question. Many obstacles, many obstacles, uh, but I, can, I, I, I believe, um, no, it's so easy when I ask candidates this, right? What was your biggest obstacle? And now you're asking me the question that I have to think about. Um, I guess the biggest obstacle for me when I started um, was coming back to Malaysia. I'm born and bred Malaysian, but I lived in, in I lived abroad for 15 years of my most formative years in my 20s. And when I came back to Malaysia, the biggest obstacle for me um, was to make people understand my mindset, where I was coming from. Because I was Malaysian for 16 years of my life, born, bred, and also advocated to be a Malaysian in the way I was thinking. Then I go away to the UK and I become not an English person, but... Um, um, not a British person, but a very much different way and very exposed way of thinking. And then when you come back to Malaysia, you, you encounter people who don't understand why you are so open, why you are so transparent, um, how you can be so um, 
how you can advocate so strongly about something and, and, and even to an extent having an opinion about certain things that, you know, isn't your place, right? So my biggest obstacle was basically um, trying to adjust and trying to make people understand um, the fact that um, um, you know, to, you know to, to, to for them to understand, understand why, 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 you know, suddenly I probably have an altered, altered state, state of the way I think or the way I speak or, or my, my opinions. Um, but you know, that carried me really well. The, the, the obstacle became actually a help for me because when I went into my first job, um, it served me well because I was able to talk to and, and, and work with people from all walks of life and people from people from um, I had the boss from New Zealand. I had a colleague from Australia. I had the counterparts who were from Spain, you know, I was pretty young, not so young, but pretty young at the time. But because I was exposed, I was able to, to carry my own. I was able to carry myself with these people and with the global team. So, so the thing that was an obstacle became something that helped me. All right, that's great. That's a great answer. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, from what has been shared by Ms. Mali, we know that it's crucial for us to understand not only things surround us, but also the cultural differences between us and also other companies and other people surround us. And also, Hilti is your one of the best opportunity out there. And also, moving on to the next question, what do you think a leadership training for women in the technical field should include, especially in this industry of 4.0 era? Women in the industry uh, right now, trainings for them. I go back. I go back to you know. If you have the technical know-how, that's fantastic. But soft skills are also very, very important. Training for soft skills, how to communicate, how to how to differentiate. For me, communication is key. No matter how good you may be technically, you need to know how to communicate. Um, and also need to be a bit of uh, humility goes a long way. Um, but but. In a nutshell, I would say soft skills are very important. How you carry yourself, the respect that you had, also that, that you have, um, how you how you communicate. I mean, in Hilti, we have something called mastering impactful communication. Your communication needs to be impactful, right? How you do that? Um, because you are so brilliant at your, your you know you're so brilliant with all the things that you can create or, or, or all the technology that you know or the know-how but if you can't put it across it's 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 no use right it's not to say no use but it's less impactful if you don't know how to put it across so communication is something communication Exactly. Communication is the key in this era. It's not about only academic, but how you portray yourself, how you bring yourself is also something that you should be learning about. And moving on to the next question, talking about systemic discrimination and biases, based on the data, data published by the Department of Statistics Malaysia in 2019, the salaries and wage gaps, uh, gaps between men and women are still distinct in general. So what do you think as a leader in one of the biggest companies around the world, what do you think should be done in order to overcome the gaps? I think um, once we start, once we start pushing through, um, you know, the understanding of biasness, the understanding of diversity, the understanding of inclusion and, and also the understanding that, um, you know, of, of equality, more, more importantly, the understanding of equality, um, you will slowly shift um, the market to, I guess, now it's very evident, but you also have to see what's underlying and what's actually coming up, where a lot more women leaders are coming up in the in the in our in our society. A lot of uh, women leaders are actually leading. Um, even I wouldn't even say leaders. Women are leading technology. Women are in the forefront of. Um, 
in parliament, for example, um, you know, we are in government, um, not only Malaysia, but across the world, you are beginning to see that because equality is working, because uh, these um, opportunities are being given, you can see that um, the salary gaps, the opportunity gaps, for example, are actually closing in. Um, of course, um, what, what is currently there will soon disappear and will be taken over by the new era. So my opinion is um, it, will take, it will take some time. Uh, some, of the, some of what you said is yes, true. Of course, we acknowledge that because there is a census that says this, but I also believe that we, I also believe that you have to watch this space. We are catching up. That's great, that's, that's great. great. That's a very insightful very answer by me smiling. And um, moving on to the next question from the floor itself. Have you ever been misunderstood as a HR? So maybe you can tell us like the journey, the problems that you arise as a HR and also how you face it as an obstacle. Yep. <laughs> uh, sorry for the disruption. It's okay. 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 Okay, yeah. yeah. I think um, it's yeah. misunderstood. How have I been, been misunderstood? Uh, quite, um, I think, like I go back to the communication part, right? I go back to the communication part. Sometimes people misunderstand me. Um, have misunderstood me um, maybe because of something I say, the words I use or uh, the context which I put it in. Um, I can't think of a specific, I can't think of a specific, um, a, a, a specific example, but um, maybe when I push someone to do their best, when I push someone towards, when I know I see a potential in somebody and I push them to towards something that they don't like to do. Um, I'm a mentor to a couple of mentees in, in Hilti. So I guess I do have an example. Um, it's not that they don't, they misunderstand me, but they, uh, they, they sometimes don't like what I make them do. So I will give them a task as a mentor. I give them a task and they go out and they do it. At first, they don't understand or they misunderstand why I do it. They are good. They do it to the letter, right? They perform to a letter. They do what I ask them to do to, to, to the T. And then they come back three weeks later and I ask them, so what was your, so the task that I gave you, what was it like? And they have a revelation. They have a revelation of, oh my gosh, that was, I mean, I never thought I would do it. You force me to do it, and I misunderstood you for, for forcing me to do it, but now I know why you made me do it, and I feel better now that I've actually crossed that barrier. So one of my, men, one of my mentees um, is very much an introvert, and I said, you get me to get to know a couple of people, and you have to go make friends with, let me choose who, to, who you're supposed to make friends with. And she said, oh, no, I can't. And I said, no, you, you have to go and choose this. And what do you like doing? She says, I like baking. I said, okay, you are going to bake muffins and you're going to invite all these people that I've put down in this list and you are going to meet with them and you are going to socialize with them. And she thought, oh my God, you're making me do something that's completely out of my comfort zone. But she did, as I said, and trust me, I asked her, how do you feel after that exercise, right? After baking, after inviting all these people to eat her muffins. She was more, more, more worried about how her muffins taste than actually interacting with the people that I chose her to. She was for her to interact. So, yes, sometimes you can misunderstand, but you have to clarify yourself and you have to clarify yourself through, through the results that you receive at the end or um, re reiterate what you mean. 
All right, All right, that's super that's great. So, so basically, basically what, what we have, have to do as a person is communication, communication is also at the end is a key. key. How you, com How you convey your, your message is at the end something that is very, very crucial. crucial. And, and moving on, there are a few more questions by the floor. They are very active on it. So knowing that the discrimination against women in workplace is still very prevalent in high corporate positions, despite such issues decreasing over the years, and also people are acknowledging it, how should individuals work to hold a strong ground against such issues in a constructive manner. I think if you are, you, I think if you believe very strongly about having equality, not not um, and recognizing the bias that you have. First of all, you have to recognize the bias in yourself. We are all biased, right? So recognizing recognizing and controlling that bias, understanding the bias that we have, um, the small steps that each and every one of us can make is basically recognizing the bias, controlling the bias, understanding. Um, um, how, how understanding how we be how, how we should how behave we towards each other, other. Um, um, I think as I a collective as individuals individual, you can start, you start the habit, the habit. Of, of, of you know recognizing you know, bias, bias. Um, practicing, um, practicing um, equality, equality. Um, um, as each as individual, individual does this does as a group you are much you are stronger, much stronger. Yes, yes there is, is gender bias in the in there's, there's gender bias there's generational, generational bias, bias you know there's even there's geographical, geographical bias, bias in the workplace, in the workplace. But, but i think it I think starts it from, starts us. from us. us we believe in equality we behave that way we, we recognize the biases we move away from there and we also educate people so one to the other to the other to the other makes a big group and Honestly, you know, for us as a foundation, we can probably influence. And I said, most likely we can influence. Um, with everything, it takes time. With everything, it takes um, a group to influence. I mean, just look at your look. Look at what's happening globally, right? Um, look at where one individual, you know, as individuals, you can be strong, but as a group, you're so much stronger in order to be able to influence change. That's great. So every single one is important in this effort to achieve gender equality as a whole. And moving on to the next question is that during your introduction session, you talk about stepping out of your comfort zone. So what advice would you give to all the students who are watching live here, who are like, we have around 600 plus, including here in the Webex platform and also in the live. What advice would you want to share with us and what do you wish we'd start doing? Stepping out of your comfort zone safely first, right? Um, identify something that you want to do, but you are not comfortable doing it because you fear that you won't do well. That's always the case, right? I won't, I, you know, people will laugh at me or people maybe will not be, um, people may not, may not accept it. Right? right? Stepping mm -hmm. out of your comfort zone, I'll give you that example of doing, even doing this uh, webinar or even standing up in front of 300 people. You first have to convince yourself that yes, this is something I want to do, right? But how do I do it? Now you got to take the steps in order to plan, to prepare, and then to have peers around you to say, okay, give you courage, give you confidence, and then step out of your comfort zone. Honestly, if you plan, if you prepare, and if you are the subject matter expert of, of, of this particular topic, stepping out of your comfort zone is very easy to do. I mean, a lot of people say, my name, it's easier said than done. Try it. That's what I, that's what I did. I can stand in front of 300 people right now, face to face, and have a have a have a, um, a lecture, for example, um, because I have prepared. Stepping out of your comfort zone requires preparation. It requires also people around you. You can't do it alone. You need people to advocate for you. You need people to give you the encouragement um, to to step out of your comfort zone. So that. And that also goes to the people that you keep around you have got to be to have a positive mindset. That's very important. 
that's a great, that's, that's super great to all the students, and it's very useful for all of us as a person who's going to graduate soon and also pursue and also get a job done. And also talking about that, do you have a specific experience where you wish that you had done something differently when you just finished your tertiary education and step into the working career? Yep. Um, <laughs> what? Um, yeah, maybe. Um, I never had the chance to have an internship because I, I did my studies and I went straight for work, straight into work, right? And uh, that was quite that was quite hard. Um, uh, maybe maybe um, maybe if I had the opportunity to have an internship, um, because um, and but it, but I guess during my time sound makes me sound really old, but yeah, really during my time, they they didn't offer so much of internships, or even if it was unpaid internship, I would have done it, right? But um, there were not many internships offered. There were men never. Um, there were never um, so many. Um, opportunities with universities advocating to the industry to offer internships i mean this is this is something that is wonderful and you guys have a, a great experience right but that's kind of what i wish that i had an internship for me to be able to have a taste of what it would be like to work uh, in a corporate organization or in an organization um and and work with people who are very experienced get to get to experience um how seniors work for for example and what the job entails and how difficult it is um yeah that's something that, that i would have liked to do all right that sums up everything about all about beauty and also how great miss Mali, the entire working career and also the experience that all us <laughs> students are looking forward to. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to thank not only Miss Marlin, also Mr. Vishnu, and also the team of Qt Asia IT Services, Sanjay Bahad, for being with us today and also the contributing to our event. So, right now, it's not the end of the event yet. We will be having a closed session. So, please feel free to join in and leave and see how our students interact and score this session. And that's all from us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay. okay. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the game session. And every lucky winner on the podium will be given one makeup pouch and one cream lipstick that's sponsored by Beautyra. It is called the Pillow Limb Drama Queen. And to all lucky winners, after your name has appeared on the podium, please send your full name and phone number to our official Instagram called at cs.usm. Once again, to all lucky draw winners, after your name has appeared on the podium, Podium, please send your full name and phone number to our official Instagram at cs.usm. Once again, at cs.usm. I will now pass on the floor to Mr. Aya. Okay, thank you so much, Jeremy, for the introduction. And okay, all right, everyone, I hope you're all doing a wonderful day during this weekend. My name is Arya, and I will be your commentator and guide for this game session. I think Jeremy has explained it previously, but I will explain it again. So now we are having a Kahoot session, which the top players will receive a prize from our valued sponsor, Butera Cosmetics. Alright, so, but first, I would like to explain the important rule for participating in this game. To complete and able to claim the prize, I request that all of the participants to use their full name or their first and second name if it's too long, because it will ease us to verify the name of the winners during the end. Now, let the game commence! Okay, so let me share my screen first, sorry about that. Uh, okay. okay. Here's a thing about out of uh, uh, hang on. Hang on. Right, right, so right, can so you can stream my screen? Uh, Jeremy, if you could reply. Yep, it's loading, so give it a second. Yeah. Alright, All right. so those are the game pins, so feel free to input it into kahoot.it and join it. And we will wait until, I don't know, half of the participants. So how many participants we have? Uh, I think it's about 400-ish, so 
I would be I would really be happy really if happy at least 200 ish people joined us, joined us today. All right, so let's just wait for another two to five minutes while listening to the music. People, it, it, 81, 82, and yeah, just keeps going up. I hope this continues until 200 ish people join. Hmm, I'm checking the name, and it seems there are a few people that will be disqualified. Such as this person that enters with a lame T. You think you're funny, don't you? Sorry about that. And ABC 64T. Hmm, I'm pretty disappointed, guys. All of you didn't listen to me or listen to us. That's sad. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is really Yeah, yeah, there are some of you that didn't know these full names, so... Oh, tough oh, luck! Tough luck. But, I like what you say. And there, are, there is one, one guy that are using my name. And let me clarify that this is not my name. This is not me, I'm sorry. Whoever this is, this is an imposter. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you please put it on the screen? Thank you. Full screen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Alright, alright. Yeah, yeah, that's why. I want to use her for me. We really know me as well, because I've been previously to use my full name, and maybe I want to win a prize. Alright, so... This is my point. This is the most great in the room, I think. And there are two people that are using my name. Why? Why do you do this? Alright, so... Let's wait till... Aw, oh, it dropped. Until 200 people join in and then we can start the game, alright? So, be patient everyone. I would like uh, as much as for this defense as I would like. Oh, come, come on, guys. guys. Use, Use your, your full name. name. This, this is serious, serious business, all right? If you, you want to win those prizes, prizes you got to follow the rules. <sighs> well. Yep. It seems people are not listening to us, comedy. What should we do? <sighs> Alright then. Alright, the numbers, the total participants is 202. I think we should start the game now. Alright, so let's start. Okay. okay, so. 3, 2, 1. First question. Change to challenge. What is the theme? I'm oh, sorry. What is the theme for IWD 2021? This is pretty basic. This is. We told you about this on the first day, right?
65 are correct, 65 got wrong. Well, well, well. this is an unfortunate event. But, oh well. Moving on, and let's see who is in the top, who is in the lead. Honey. Good. Moving on to the second question. The event is organized by the Computer, si Computer Science Society, USM, in collaboration with. Hmm. Who could it be? What could it be? Six, five, four, three, two, one. Da. Well, seems a lot of you didn't pay attention. Again, disappointed. But let's move on. Ooh, and Honey has been replaced by Alia, and follow the second place Adelia, and third by Hivi. Rats with our three. Now, I've made the third question slightly harder to test your math brain skills. All right. How many sponsors? So, all of the four options. You just have to simplify it. This is quick maths. I'm guessing all of you can do it. And the majority! Oh my god! All of you! Why? What happened? Oh, oh well. 35 got him correct at least. And Alia is still in the lead. Imagine ladies and gentlemen, Odilia and followed by Siti Aisha. Looks like Alia will be the winner, who knows? Moving on to the fourth question. During the first day of the program, how many, how many years, years does Datok, Nicole, and David hold on as the world's number one? If any of you lot choose this, I'm questioning your sanity or your mental health. One, zero. Twenty-eight of you. What happened? What happened? 28, 28 of you! Of you. Do you, you seriously, seriously think, think eternity? eternity? Oh my, oh my god. god. This meant this to be a joke, guys. I, I didn't... I didn't... didn't. Alright. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, looks like I have a poor network, so sorry if I am lagging. My apologies. Moving on to the next questions. To the fifth. Question. In which year the Statue of Nicole and David has been awarded? Yeah. The blue option seems kind of sus. You know what I'm saying? Two, one, zero. 2019, 2019 is correct, is correct. And, the and the blue one is also correct, correct because the coronavirus, the coronavirus started, started at 2019. 2019. The more you know. Ooh, Ali has been replaced, ladies and gentlemen, by Siti Aisha. And Yenting move on to the second place. All right, last two questions, six question. Which company does Bismaya represent? This is really early, all right? This is on this day, so it's impossible for all of you to forget it already. Hmm, I'm gonna check my soundboard. Hey, that's pretty good. All right. All right. Correct. Now, I am happy for once that the majority of you choose the correct answers. Good job. All right, moving on to the last question. Sorry. Moving on to the last question. Seven question. This is also multi-select. So, it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, it could be four. I don't know. What is beauty to you? Pride, self-esteem, confidence, various? Yep. yep, 
all of them, all of them are, are correct, correct because the beauty, beauty comes in all, all shapes and sizes, sizes. All right? all right now, now let us let move, on move on to the to podium, the podium. Third place, third place, five out of seven, and third place is disqualified, because you are not using your full name, I think. Second one, Anyo, you are also not using your full name, I think. And Alia, Ad, I think, I think you're, you're correct name, all right. So first place, Alia Adlina, followed by the runner-ups, I forgot the names, all right. So congrats to all the winners, and for those that in the top places the winners like the top three that are not using your full name will be disqualified the top 10 we will see like the list of the top 10 all right all right so congrats to the winners and right, that's it Bye -bye. Thank you, do you mind you stop sharing? And once again, congratulations to all the winners. Before we end this session, once again, thank you for all your participation in today's webinar. I'm Jeremy, representing the whole organizing committee, would like to express our sincere appreciation to Huty Asia IT Services in Drumberhut for your support and not forgetting also our participants towards our program organized by the Computer Science Society in collaboration with the Center for Research on Women and Gender Unity Science Malaysia. We hope that this event has inspired you in many ways, especially to be bold to face challenges as what's being mentioned by Ms. Malin is to step up of your comfort zone. The attendance link has been shared in the chat box and please remember to join our Telegram channel to receive updates for upcoming events and have a nice day and see you again.